Hello my little treasure hunters. Welcome to the Bailey Gifford Borders Book Festival online. My name is Christina Stevenson. Some of you may have met me before with my most famous character, Sir Charlie Stinky Socks. But don't worry if you haven't, because you're going to get to know me and him in this storytelling, treasure hunting, craft making, song singing adventure. I'm going to be reading you the story of Sir Charlie Stinky Socks, The Tale of Two Treasures. You'll be following clues and solving puzzles and meeting one or two very interesting characters along the way. Then we're going to make some really cool stuff like treasure maps and green bean gloop. It's going to be so much fun, so don't switch off. Right then, for those of you who haven't already met him, this is Sir Charlie Stinky Socks. He's a bold, brave knight. He's got two best friends. His faithful cat, Envelope, meow, and his good grey mare. Oh, and these are the Wiggly Woos. You'll find them in all my Sir Charlie books. Sir Charlie has a trusty sword. Well, of course he does. He's a bold, brave knight. But he never, ever uses his sword for fighting. No, no, Charlie isn't that sort of knight. He's kind, he's thoughtful, and he's very, very clever. So Sir Charlie uses his sword for things like washity thwacking through deep, dark forests to tall, tall towers with pointy roofs, or for chopping up birthday cakes to share with his friends. But today, Sir Charlie is going on a treasure hunt, and he is really, really pleased that you are coming with him. And when I say you... I don't just mean you children, I mean the grown-ups too, because this is an event for everyone. Right then, you may have noticed all these cardboard boxes around me and these treasure chests. That's because I have turned these cardboard boxes into treasure chests for this treasure hunt. And you can have a go at making your own after the event. It's really, really easy. You need a cardboard box, Big, small, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what shape it is. You need to seal up all the openings so you've got a sort of cube. So you've got a box like this. Next, you cut three of the sides. Only three because you need a hinge to make a lid. Simple. Then, if I just move the wiggly woos, what you're going to do is use some cardboard shapes like strips and circles to make all the extra bits on the chest. So you can make locks, strips, edges, whatever you want to do. And finally, you're going to paint it or cover it with coloured paper or draw on it or cover it with newspaper or just leave it as cardboard because that looks pretty good too. And you will end up with your very own treasure chest. You can put your books in it, your toys in it, or you can have an adventure and pretend you're hunting for treasure. But for now, are you ready for a story? I think we should get on and tell the story of Sir Charlie Stinky Socks, The Tale of Two Treasures by me. Christina Stevenson. Once upon a dusty shelf, in the musty space where a precious book should have been, the king of the castle on top of the hill found a paper scroll. He unrolled it and found a mystical map showing the way to a world underground. There was a tomb of doom, a river of riddles, a mine of much despair. And there, in a puzzling pit, something beyond compare. Treasure, said the king of the castle. Then somebody needs to fetch it. Isn't it right that a bold, brave knight should go on such a quest? Oh, yes. How fitting, then, that Sir Charlie Stinky Socks just happened to be in the castle. 
along with his faithful, fearless cat, Envelope, and his good grey mare. Three fine fellows, steadfast and ready. Well, nearly ready, that is. For the horse needed shoes, the cat couldn't choose what he ought to take with him, and bold, brave Sir Charlie had... a dent in his trusty sword. Oh, no! Send for the blacksmith, cried the king of the castle. This night must be prepared. Oh, look, can you see Envelope rummaging about in that basket? I wonder what he's going to choose to take with him. There's a teddy bear, a skipping rope, a ball and a bow. What would you choose to take on a treasure hunting adventure? Slightly scared, the blacksmith bowed before the king of the castle. While behind him, his daughter did her best to show her father's wares. A hero's helmet. A shimmering shield. And a hammer to mend a sword. Heave, ho, clunkety clunk, chink. I think we're ready, said Sir Charlie Stinky Socks. And, map in hand, the eager band set off in search of the treasure. Clip, clop, clip, clop, tippity, tippity, toe. The echo of footsteps followed the friends, and someone watched them go. Hmm. I wonder who's watching Sir Charlie Stinky Socks. The mystical map took the trusty trio to a flight of stony stairs. A curtain of cobwebs hung at the top. But what was at the bottom? A frightful feeling filled the cat. Terror took over the mare. Only Sir Charlie Stinky Socks would dare to find out. He put on his helmet. He grabbed his shield. He drew his trusty sword. And hang on a second, he said to the others. This is so unfair. Isn't it right that a well-prepared knight should offer to share his metal? Sir Charlie gave the cat his helmet and the good grey mare his shield before wielding his sword and leading them into the Tomb of Doom. Eek! It was a fearful room, but they had to go through. Trip, trap, trip, trap. Tippity, tippity, toe. Eerie footsteps followed the three, and skeletons watched them grow? What? Why did Sir Charlie and his steadfast friends suddenly seem to get bigger? Ye gods, said the knight, the walls are moving. The tomb of doom is shrinking. Envelope squealed. The grey mare reeled. Would they be squashed to a pulp? Gulp. Fear not, said Sir Charlie to his frightened friends, for there's always a secret door. And there, on the floor, in a bundle of bones, he found a skeleton key. There had to be a lock to match, but could Sir Charlie find it? Why did you have a go? Somewhere hidden in the picture, there's a lock that looks like that. See if you can find it. In less than a
a shake of a pussycat's tail, clever Sir Charlie found the lock. A secret panel in the tomb slid open and everyone leapt out. Phew! Roots and shoots from the garden above spilled into the tunnel below and foreboding footsteps followed the three as someone watched them go. Pitter-patter, pitter-patter, down to the river of riddles. Oh, what a pity the treasure was on the other side. Envelope didn't seem bothered, nor did the smug grey mare. It seemed the pair had found the solution quicker than Sir Charlie. Hip, hop, clippity, clop, wouldn't this be a doddle? Nope. The river rumbled, the stepping stones crumbled, and the cat and the horse fell in. Splash! Fiddlesticks, said Sir Charlie Stinky Socks. Now I'm going to have to get wet. Splosh! Sir Charlie rescued his faithful friends and pulled them back to the shore. The mystical map was soaked. But would you believe it? A riddle was showing through. Look for the stones that spell out the answer to find the path that is true. Why don't you see if you can work this out? What can run but never walks? Has a mouth but never talks? Has a head but never weeps? Has a bed but never sleeps? Hmm, tricky that one. I've made you a river of riddles which might just help. Have a look. The answer to the riddle is hidden here. See if you can spell it out. R E V E R River. Yes, one good guess, and Sir Charlie solved this puzzle too. Hurrah! Over the river, but still dripping wet, Sir Charlie stopped to think. Tis best we rest and dry ourselves beside a warming fire. Drip, drip, crackle, spit, snore, snore. Snore. Gunk! Gunk! What was that? Envelope woke up. Why was Sir Charlie dressed in his armour and tiptoeing away? Hmm. Wait for us, thought the puzzled cat, and he rallied the groggy grey mare. They followed the knight, who followed the map, too. The mine of much despair. Beware! Envelope faltered. The grey mare froze. The bold knight didn't flicker. Quicker than you could say, trusty sword. He climbed aboard a wagon, leaving a pair of petrified pals wondering what they should do. Until they heard the footsteps behind them and decided to jump in too. Whoa! Shriek! Eek! Ooh! Ah! Down to a puzzling pit where a knobbly gobbly was sitting on a chest grinning a ghastly grin. The treasure is yours! he said to the knight, if you can guess which chest it is in.
Whoops, said the gobbly. I nearly forgot. There's a teensy wincy catch. To make things more interesting, why don't we say you only get three goes? Get it right, he said to Sir Charlie, and I promise the treasure is yours. But get it wrong, and I get the cat and the horse. Oh my! Gobbly gobblies are mean and green. If you ever see one, run and scream. They will try to trick you. They will make your head spin. So beware of the nobly gobbly with a ghastly grin. <laughs> Nobbly gobblies are not much fun. If you ever see one, scream and run. Dirty rotten scoundrels always want to win. So beware of the nobbly gobbly with a ghastly grin. <laughs> This was Sir Charlie's stinky socks. He wouldn't need three goes. The knight chose the chest that he thought looked best. The treasure wasn't inside it. He lifted the lid of the biggest one. It was empty too. Ooh! What was wrong with Sir Charlie's stinky socks? Why wasn't he getting this right? And come to think of it, since they'd sat down to rest at the River of Riddles, the knight had been acting strangely. Could it possibly be that under that helmet. Oh, this wasn't Sir Charlie at all. Trip, trap, trip, trap, tiptoeing into the light. The real knight, Sir Charlie Stinky Socks, appeared to save the day. I know who you are said kind Sir Charlie. So why don't you take off that helmet? Three pairs of eyes watched with surprise and there was the blacksmith's daughter. I'm sorry, she said to Sir Charlie. I followed you from the castle, and while you were sleeping by the river of riddles, I borrowed your helmet and shield. More than anything else in the whole wide world, I want to be a knight. Then I'll help you get this right, said Sir Charlie. Let's think what a knight would do. The blacksmith's daughter looked at Sir Charlie, tip-tapping the mystical map. Oh, a knight would look at that, she said. It's bound to give him a clue. It was true. X marked the spot on the mystical map. And if she could find the right chest, not the biggest or the best, but the one that matched, then she'd find the treasure. Could you? 
Why don't you see if you can find the X that marks the treasure? Gobbly was mightily mad because the blacksmith's daughter did it. Hooray! Now all that was left was to find a way to get it to the king. How fortunate then that the puzzling pit was down at the bottom of a well and, as luck would have it, Envelope the cat had chosen to bring a Oh. Do you remember at the beginning of the story, Envelope was looking for something to take with him from the basket? He brought a bow. I think he brought the skipping rope too. With one quick flick of his trusty sword, Sir Charlie made an arrow. Look what he's going to do. It's very clever. Ping! What a thing! Everyone climbed out! The king of the castle was overjoyed when he looked inside the chest and found the best kind of treasure for a fairy tale king. A fabulous book of spells. Wow! Well, of course, he thanked Sir Charlie Stinky Socks, the cat and the good grey mare. But he knighted the blacksmith's daughter and he gave her a treasure beyond compare. The end. Did you enjoy that? Did you solve the riddle? Did you find the X on the right treasure chest? I'll bet you did. What I thought we'd do now is make our own treasure maps, just like the ones Sir Charlie followed. It's really easy to do, and then you'll be able to play your own treasure hunting game afterwards. What you need is some paper, a bowl of warm water, not too hot please, some tea bags, a stirring spoon, a pen, and of course, some treasure to hide. I've got some gold coins here, chocolate coins, but you could use anything you want to, just something that'd be fun to hide and find. And here's what you do. First of all, take your paper and scrunch it up. Not too much, but just enough to make some nice creases. Open it out again. and then just pop it on one side. Next, you need to drop your tea bags into the warm water, stir them round till you've got some nice tea colour and some very soggy tea bags. And this is what you're going to do next. Make sure your scrunched up piece of paper is in a waterproof tray or a sink, or somewhere where it doesn't matter if it gets wet. Next, take your soggy tea bags and start dripping the tea over the paper. The idea is we're going to turn the paper into old-fashioned parchment, so it looks like the sort of treasure map that Charlie was following. Keep doing it as much or as little as you want to, and eventually 
it's going to start turning brown. When your paper's nicely covered with tea, you need to lift it up and drip off as much of the tea as you can. Be a little bit careful with it because the paper's quite delicate at this stage. Then you need to put it on one side to dry. It's going to take a little while for your paper to dry, maybe even a couple of hours, but be patient because eventually it's going to look something like this, a nice old piece of parchment. To make it look even older and more like a treasure map, you can tear some pieces out of it. Tear the edges like this and then you're ready to start drawing. Here's one that my children drew earlier. Make sure you have a starting point and an X that marks where the treasure is hidden. Then you can draw or write instructions that you want your treasure hunters to follow. You can go anywhere you want, into the living room, into the kitchen, up and down the stairs. Make sure you say how many steps you want people to take and which direction you want them to go in. You can do your treasure hunt in one room in the house or all over the house, in the garden or in the park. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure you don't forget to hide your treasure in the place where X marks the spot. Now you can give your treasure map to whoever it is you want to find the treasure. Happy treasure hunting. Next, I'm going to show you how to make something that appears in the first three Sir Charlie Stinky Socks books that I wrote. It's called Green Bean Soup, or Gloop, as my children used to call it. You're going to need a deep tray or a shallow dish, some corn flour, a jug of water, a mixing spoon, and some green food colouring or ink. This is the easiest thing in the world to do, but it is so much fun. What you need to do is tip the corn flour into your tray or your shallow dish. Next, you're going to take your jug of water and your spoon and you're going to pour the water into the corn flour, stirring it as you go. You'll know when you've got enough water because the corn flour will feel like a liquid. I think that should do it. You'll know when you've added enough water because your corn flour will look something like this. Now you can add the colour, a few drops at a time. Now for the really fun bit, you can use your hands to mix in the colour. I'm going to get my children to do it for me, even though my children are now 19 and 23. Come on kids. Get mixing. You can add more colour as you go along if you want to. And just watch. Keep mixing. Grown-ups, don't worry if this looks really messy, it's not. Just let the corn flour gloop dry a little bit on your fingers and brush it off like powder. And just look what the gloop can do. Sometimes it's solid, then as if by magic, it's gloop again.
So there we are, green bean gloop, which leads me nicely into the final part of the event today. It's a song, a song which I'd like you to join in with, and it's a song which some of you might already know. It's not a song about green bean gloop, it's a song about green bean soup. It's the same soup that the wily witch with the watch is making in the really big adventure. It's the same green bean soup that the ghastly ghouls are eating in the really frightful night. They're dribbling, they're drooling, they're guzzling, they're gorging, they're slurping, they're burping, and they are... Yes, I'm sorry, they are, because that's what happens when you eat too many beans. And it's the same green bean soup that turns into a beanstalk in the really dreadful spell. So... Let's join in with a song. I've got the words here for you. I'd like you to do jazz hands when we get to the word amazing. And maybe you could cover your nose for the last line and say, and never mind the smell. So here we go. I'll do the verses and you do the chorus. Everyone join in, please. Take a bean that is green, never pink, purple or blue, never blue. If the bean that you choose isn't green, then the soup could be a stew. That will not do. Take a pinch of bogey from your nose, a slice of cheese from under your toes. Stir it up, stir it well. Add some dribble, drool, guzzle and ghoul, slurp it all when slightly cool. Cover your nose. And never mind the smell. Here we go, your turn. Because green bean soup is so wonderful. Green bean soup is swell. Green bean soup is amazing. Cover your nose. And never mind the smell. Brilliant. Oh, I'm sorry. Second verse. Take a bean that is green, never red, orange or grey. Never grey. If the bean that you choose isn't green, then the soup could be a souffle. And quite dismay. Take a pinch of bogey from your nose, a slice of cheese from under your toes. Stir it up, stir it well. Add some dribble, drool, guzzle and ghoul, slurp it all when slightly cool. Cover your nose. And never mind the smell. Big voices. Because green bean soup is so wonderful. Green bean soup is swell. Green bean soup is amazing. Cover your nose. Never mind the smell. One more time. Green bean soup is so wonderful. Green bean soup is swell. Green bean soup is amazing. Cover your nose. Big finish. Never mind the smell. I beg your pardon. Thank you so much to the wonderful Bailey Gifford Borders Book Festival for having me here. Thank you for joining me. Thanks to my husband, Nigel, for the music and to my kids for their helping hands. Don't forget that you can buy the books from the festival website. And I really hope I'm going to see you again in person soon. Happy treasure hunting. Bye.